Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris and Jesse. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, your fortnightly podcast for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris, and with me as always is Jesse. Hi there. All right. And so if you like what you hear today, uh, please don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or on iTunes. You can leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you. You can uh, tweet us at SST Show with show ideas. Again, we'd love to hear from you. And, uh, you know, just drop us an email. You can contact me directly, chris at justforcat.com, if you'd like to email me. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and get started like we always do. What we've been doing this week. Sweet. All right, so Jesse, what's been up? Uh, well, I'm assuming we're talking about guitar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, um, my no- usual couch noodling, although I started working on uh, All of Me, which is kind of an old standard. You know, I, okay. guess, I guess you could sort of call it a jazz standard. It's, you know, from the old American songbook. It's pretty easy. It's got some kind of bluesy a bit to it, a lot of like seventh chords following seventh chords, like dominant sevenths. Okay. Um, but they kind of move two five one ish in a jazz sort of way in parts of it. It's oh, not nice. not that hard a song, really. Uh, but it's a good tune that like everybody knows, so it's cool. Does it go two five one without being minor dominant major? Uh, yes, and it varies how it does that. So like one time it'll go like two five uh, in just sevenths, which would be you know dominant sevenths would be very bluesy, right? Um, but then it'll go like dominant seven to um, minor seven uh, in this one in one part. So it kind of really varies things around. Huh. Um, so it kind of goes through keys, you know, several times, which is nice. Yeah, it does sound interesting. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, it is an interesting tune. All of me. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, because um, yeah, I keep flirting with jazz tunes every once in a while. The latest uh, tune that I've been looking at starting today really is black orpheus Mm -hmm. because it has some nice um sort of those a nice use for those most four string voicings uh seventh chord voicings and on top of that uh it has some diminished chords in it diminished seventh chords right so give me a chance to sort of add i'm working on those those are pretty easy to play but it's give me a chance to sort of add those into progressions yeah um especially with the four the upper four string voicings to be um I think it might be nice. I'll probably take that song though, and I'll probably play um, sort of the lower four string voicings and try to mix it up a little bit to mm-hmm. see how to compare and contrast and just, you know, mess around some. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I've been working on that. The other thing I'm working on too is um, Under the Bridge, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm hmm. That's a great song. I mean, if if you're if you were a teenager in the '90s, you and I talked about this before. But if you're a teenager in the '90s, there's like this. You, you experience some level of teenage angst. You know, you listen to that song, and people can tell you, "I I broke up with my boyfriend or my girlfriend." I listened to Under the Bridge for like you know hours or whatever. I don't know. Uh, I wasn't very angsty as a uh, teenager, but I did like the song, and it was sort of kind of fit in with being uh, a teen at that time. Plus chili peppers. I mean, they're just cool. Yeah. You know, I was talking to my guitar instructor about this today. And he said, you know, they had such an interesting sound, a lot of clean guitar mm-hmm. um, with what they did. And it just, they made it work. They made it rock. And it was you know, just some really cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, also, a real good opportunity to finger pick. Yeah. Because the intro, I, I decided to be lazy at first and try the intro with just a um, guitar pick. Because it's it's almost all single string. There's a couple of times where you would play two strings at one time. That's pretty easy pick and plop, right? Like a hybrid kind of picking thing. Right. But it doesn't sound right. Mm-hmm. You know, that song has a very specific sound to it. And that pick, it's just too bright when right. you're playing it. Um, so, yeah, so you get to work on finger picking. And then the first verse, uh, yeah, I believe it's the first verse, um, sh- probably should be finger picked as well. Uh-huh. And uh, but now the first verse are, is a bunch of chords. So for me, it's been a challenge of getting sort of the all the strings to ring out at the same time to get this nice sound that's going on uh, in the song. Uh huh. 
So I have a lot of work to yeah. do to get that to work well, but uh, it's good. Uh, it's sure. been it's been an interesting new skill to add to my skill set. Yeah, yeah, and that's it's always, that's cool. Yeah, it's always best to add these kinds of things as um, a song, as opposed to I think as opposed to drilling them in. Well, because you're going to stick with them, right? You know, that's I mean, right. if you had any kind of finger picking pattern or, you know, well, anything really. Um, we, we were talking last week about, you know, finding songs to do like two, five, one and get the, you know, those chords under your fingers. I mean, you know, you can have a pattern and just kind of go over and over, but you just hire that so fast. Whereas yep. you get a song, it's like, not only is it just more entertaining to do it, but it's also like, you just get this nice feeling of satisfaction when you do it. And it sounds like the record or like a version you're familiar with or whatever. Right. So, right. yeah, well, that's what repertory is about. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so I thought, yeah, I thought Under the Bridge would be a nice next song uh, to work on. I don't know which song I'll work on after that. I'm not going to worry about it until I'm pretty comfortable with Under the Bridge. But uh, definitely, definitely getting back into playing some songs. Some of this jazz stuff, you know, that that we've been working with my instructor, and you and I have talked about this off show, uh, it's hard for me to really get an ear for it because I don't generally listen to jazz. Right. I know it's good for me to play. It's good for me to like, you know, these different chord combinations and sort of get outside of the box a little bit. But since I don't listen to it so much, it's really hard for me to say, oh, yeah, I know Black Orpheus. And it's supposed to sound like this. And it's in my head. Right. Uh, But with like Under the Bridge, I've heard that song enough. I know exactly what it's supposed to sound like. Uh, And so it's much easier to learn. And it's much more enjoyable, too. Well, that's true. And actually, you know, there's a... You know, when I'm kind of noodling around on the on the sofa or whatever, it's like I can pick out songs that are well, not jazz, that are from my history that are just I've heard so many times, whether it be a rock tune or a folk tune, because I kind of started with all those folk guys from the seventies, you know, Denver and Croce and Lightfoot and all those guys. And right. uh Cat Stevens. And you can kind of like remember the song and sort of figure it out just from memory. Sometimes, you know, I mean, it just depends on how, well, how much you want to dedicate to it. But um, jazz, I just don't have that. I mean, I know the the big standard songs uh, Uh that like everybody's heard. Even if you don't think you know the song, it's like you've heard Sinatra do it or whatever the deal is. It's in there if if somebody played it for you. Um, But beyond that, like I don't really have the jazz repertory in my head at all. And even when I listen to like some of my favorite players, it's not connected with something – internal that I could sit down and sort of get it from memory or whatever. Like I've heard, you know, a couple of Joe Pass albums like a bunch of times, you know, because I just like the sound of his play. You know, I like to listen to it, but it doesn't, I could never recall it. You know what I mean? Right. It would never be like, Oh, let me figure that out. I mean, it's not going to happen. Whereas I don't know, Rocky mountain high. It's like, I could do that. I could figure that out from memory. So sure. I mean, certainly there is a difficulty level difference between those two things. But I mean, uh, it's also just what's been a part of my upbringing, sort of, mm-hmm. from childhood. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I respect jazz. I like it. I, you know, I, I want to be better at it, but it's not a part of that. So it just it's more work. And I'm yeah. lazy. <laughs> yeah. The lazy yeah. gets you every time. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I hear you. It's it's that whole issue. Like, you know, it, because you don't listen to it, you, you don't have a sense of what it's supposed to sound like, you know, intuitively. And a lot of times, you know, I'll, my instructor will say something like, oh, yeah, he'll name a song, jazz standard. Have you ever heard that before? I'm like, no, I've never heard that song before. And then he'll start playing it. I'm like, oh, yes, I have heard that song before. Right. It's one of those things that you, you hear, but I don't know what it is. Right. Right. So you hear it like you're, I don't know, you're on an elevator. I don't know. And uh, <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah, right. Jazz is elevator music. <laughs> right. right. And then it's like, oh, OK, I think I've heard it on an elevator before. Um, or like a TV commercial or whatever the case may be. Will we have um, elevator versions of Metallica songs in the future? I don't know. Uh, I bet. <laughs> Here's something to think about, right? I would say in about 30 years, there is going to be Metallica pumped into old people's homes. That's a good point. You, you go to the nursing home and what are you going to hear? You're going to hear gangster rap and Metallica. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> I well, hang out at that old folks home. <laughs> it won't be cool because the, the kids will be listening to something completely different now. And they're like, oh, I can't believe I listen to Metallica. I know that sucks. Blah, 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 right? That's just like the kids of the time will be doing. So, so at that time, Metallica will be old people's music. In That's fact, true. it might be right now. I don't know what the, the, <laughs> the kids are listening to these days. 
Yeah, uh, that's a I, good point. Yeah, you know, I hear about you know these various. Uh, I guess they're music artists or whatever. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. And, and my wife will say, Oh, they they sing such a song. But like, oh, I didn't realize it was a person. I thought you know, <laughs> like this is a name, and I didn't know it was like a band or if it was just I don't know what it is. Well, nowadays, um, it's always somebody featuring somebody. Oh yeah. So the old folks home, it'll have to be like Metallica featuring Anthrax. Oh wow. <laughs> That could be, you know, 30 years from now, the old folks tour, um, they just hop around like from old folks home to old folks home, Metallica, Anthrax. Yeah. Uh-huh. And Megadeth. That'd be great. That would be, yeah, that would be a good show. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, they'll be, they'll be old too. So uh, maybe they'll have the longevity of like, you know, the Rolling Stones and they'll be able to, to tour even at that age. That's true. Maybe. That'd be yeah. cool. I can't see how feel like thrashing at the guitar at that but you never know you never know i mean yeah absolutely so do you have any birthdays for us this week i have two i have uh steve howe on april 8th um he was a guitar player for yes um did he play with anybody else (laughs) i mean he had some solo stuff too in asia of course (laughs) that one huge album and then a few other not so huge albums but um so yeah wonderful player very probably the one of the more uh, wide ranging sort of styles, whatever. Um, and Richie Blackmore from deep purple on the uh, 14th. So he's, he's my favorite of like that classic English, you know, Zeppelin Sabbath, you know, deep purple. I, I just love the way Blackmore played. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah that, that, uh, that book we talked about a few shows, episodes back, the blues guitar for dummy dummies ended with that sort of era. Yeah. Yeah. And it was one of the ones I had mentioned. Uh, they didn't have anything like, you know, in his style, like tabs or whatever in his style, but it was like a name drop. Oh, you know, there's, um, you know, these folks too. And uh, he was one of the ones listed. So, yeah, cool. Cool. Uh, I know we talked about last episode, I think it was last episode, um, getting guitars ready for spring. Mm-hmm. Leave that. Yeah. Was, anyway, I spent a little bit of time actually doing that today. I went ahead and started restringing a few guitars, some of which hadn't been restrung since like, <laughs> Um, well, let's just say about uh, over a year, <laughs> uh, like a year and three or four months. So, uh, yeah, I spent some time reconditioning fretboards, cleaning up those and, uh, watching movies. And I think watching movies is like the best way to spend time while restraining guitars. Yeah. You just can't, you just can't watch something you're really interested in seeing. That's true. I catch up on like TV shows, like a backlog of daily shows or something. Mm-hmm. You know, if I have and uh, or I'll listen to podcasts or something. But actually, I like the TV better because it's like I, like you say, I can usually t- tune out and I don't care. Like the podcast I listen to, I kind of want to pay attention. and I end up having to replay them because I'm like ah, restringing and you get stuck in that. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, usually when I'm doing a restring, I'm also checking intonation. I'm checking neck. And I'm, che- I'm right. doing everything. Like I'm doing the small setup on a guitar every time I change the strings. So, uh, you know, my attention is definitely split. I, I ended up, I started watching um, this movie on Netflix called uh, Cowboys versus Dinosaurs. Right. <laughs> it was awful. Like I was expecting <laughs> cowboys, like, you know, like uh, the 1800s cowboys riding out in the range, you know, Wild West kind of stuff. It was in the West, but it was like modern day cowboys that do like rodeo riding and stuff. Like this is not what I wanted to sign up for. So, so I ended that movie after about twenty minutes, and then ended up watching Force of Execution by Steven Seagal. Oh wow! Yeah, that was another one. It had Steven Seagal, Danny Trejo, and Ving Rhames. And so, is this like fairly modern Seagal? After twenty thirteen, had... yeah, quite oh, modern. So yeah. he's had like a lot of donuts by then. Yeah, yeah, quite modern. Um, <laughs> it was exactly what you expected the movie to be, um, but it was a great thing to have in the background while um, restraining guitars because I could, like, you know, phase out for 10 minutes at a time, 15 minutes at a time, go back to it. I was like, oh, yeah, I know exactly what's going on. There's this really weird witch doctor twist at the end, which caught me off guard, but fortunately <laughs> I was taking a break while that happened, so I could see that. I was like, oh, okay, this all makes sense, and then – go back not that i cared either way um <laughs> i could have made you know, it could have made no sense at all i would have just been restringing uh i ended up restringing my 339 and my yamaha pacifica sweet so yeah because the the pacifica i keep down tuned right. and uh half step and i always find that to be 
more work when I'm when I'm restringing that guitar, uh, and I don't know why. So this guitar, when I because it's I don't know if it's because it is down tuned, but this one required a pretty significant neck adjustment mm-hmm. um, this time, and it was actually I needed more relief. Okay, I would expect less relief, and then the 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 uh, truss rod nut was stuck a little bit, so I had to put some muscle behind that and get it to turn. I must have turned the truss rod nut almost close to a half turn. I turned mm-hmm. a lot. And uh, I don't know if it was just loose and not really turning for part of that. I'm not sure. But um, finally, at the next set, I had to change the uh, intonation quite a bit. But it was it required a lot of work. Right. It might have been to the fact that it hadn't been restrung in so long. Could be. Wasn't that the the one where it wasn't that like the first one you ever adjusted and we had a surprising amount of turn to it? Or am I thinking of a different guitar? I think you're thinking about the um the Telecaster. The Telecaster I assembled. That yeah. one came from one of the Grizzly kits and that required a lot of adjustment. Yeah. But that the wood didn't have any tension on it at all and yeah, yeah. so you got it in interesting, very interesting. How's the three thirty nine feeling? Uh, fine. It's still pokey. The um mm. fret wires. I, I I was hoping that by reconditioning the fretboard, the fretboard would maybe swell a little bit yeah. and take care of some of the um fret wire, but not so much. Yeah, it'll be great by about June. <laughs> yeah, but it's definitely going into the shop um next year, probably in January, February, to get that filed down because yeah. it's pretty rough in certain spots. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I was wiping it down with a towel today, and it, the towel got caught on it on one of the frets and just tore like a, a strand out of the towel. So, yeah, it's, it, it needs a little bit of help. This could be your fingers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, folks, be careful. Of those frets, <laughs> they will cut you. All right. Well, that's pretty much all we had planned today, folks. Uh, we just uh, – did not have a whole bunch of ideas for today's show, which is why we need you to contact us. Send us um, questions. Send us comments. Send, yes. Questions, comments. Send the love in the form of a question that takes a half hour to answer. Yes. Show, <laughs> show topics, whatever you would like to hear about. Um, we would love to, to uh, include you as part of the show. And so, again, you can tweet us at SST Show. You can um, email me, chris at jestercat.com, uh, and we'll definitely – you can post to YouTube, whatever, and we'll definitely uh, be happy to address questions or uh, any kind of show ideas that you may have. All right. Until next time, everybody, just keep picking and grinning. Six Strings and Things of Guitar Adventure is a Jester Cat production. For more on this show, please visit www.jestercat.com. You can follow us on Twitter at SST Show, and you can email the show at sixstringsandthings at gmail.com. Thanks to Jesse for playing the intro music. Mm-hmm.